Hi guys, I'm Smita and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things AI and machine learning related. Today is day five of 100 days of ML. If you guys don't know what 100 days of ML, check out day zero of 100 days of ML. This is essentially a challenge where you guys can follow along my journey and learn machine learning with me. Uh, day zero is going to explain to you guys exactly what this entire challenge is about, entire journey is about, what type of courses we'll be looking at, uh, what type of trajectory we're going to be taking. So be sure to check that out. Without further ado, let's start day five. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about a bunch of new concepts within machine learning, such as multivariate linear regression, gradient descent, and also learning rate. So let's get started. In day four's video, we talked about loss and how is loss calculated and also squared error. So that is also how we talked about how in linear regression, how is M and C calculated. So now let's actually talk about multivariate regression, multivariate linear regression. What is the difference between normal, ordinary linear regression and multivariate linear regression? Well, essentially all along we have, when I've been talking about linear regression, we have been talking about univariate linear regression in which there's only one variable or one feature that we have been looking at. Now in real life, when we're looking at real life data and when, when we're trying to predict something, we're not only going to take into account one feature or one variable, we are going to be looking at a lot of different factors or a lot of different features. So that's why we have something called multivariate linear regression. In fact, if you're using linear regression of any form, it's most likely going to be multivariate linear regression. So what is multivariate linear regression? So in univariate or in normal ordinary linear regression, we have y equals to mx plus c. But in multivariate linear regression, we have y equals to w1x1 plus w2x2 plus w3x3 plus all the way, however many features you have, let's say if you have five features all the way from w5x5 plus c. So that is multivariate linear regression. Now, do you guys remember in last in the last video where I talked about how do you find these values of w's, all these w values, and how do you find the value of c? Well, you would actually put in random values for them and the value which gives you the least error is the most optimum values for all of these uh, w's and c's. But that might be an easy case or easy scenario if you only have one variable, so you only have one w, to actually think about and compare. But what about in multivariate linear regression where you have a lot of different features, so you have multiple W values where each W can be any value, and how do you actually try to plug in the best values, the optimal values, in order to get the least error values. So to, to find the what is the optimal values of all of these Ws. So it's not going to be as simple as just putting in random values and iterating and hoping to get the least possible error because you would have to do this a lot of times and that's just very inefficient. That's where gradient descent comes in. What is gradient descent? Gradient descent is an approach, it's a way of trying to find these optimal values of W, of trying to find all these optimal values of W and B. So let's actually look at how gradient descent works. So initially you would pick random W values and then you'll calculate the loss. You would use any loss function such as, such as the one I showed you guys, which was mean squared error. So you could use that loss function and calculate loss with these initial W values. So you'd calculate the loss and you record it. And you, uh, you do that again with a different set of values for W and you calculate the loss again. If you realize that the loss has increased, that means the gradient between these two values that you have picked, the gradient and the loss, it has actually increased. So the gradient is positive in this case. And that's not what you want. You want negative gradient. The whole, uh, the whole reason why this term has gradient descent in it, in it is because we are trying to find negative gradient. If we, are if we can find negative gradient, we know that our loss value is actually decreasing. We are going uh, downwards. 
So we're actually going to approach a minimum point. But if our gradient value is positive, we know that our loss value is actually increasing because our loss value is the y-axis. So if your gradient is positive, the y values are increasing. So you know you're actually moving further away from the minimum point. So you actually want to find negative gradient. So in order to find negative gradient, you need to find lower loss. So, so how do you do that? So you put in a different set of W values. And in this set, if you get a lower loss, you know that you're in the right direction. So you, you follow uh, W values in that particular direction. So you do that again and again until you approach the minimum loss that, that is possible. And that's how you know that you have found optimum values of all the Ws. So here's another important question that comes up. What determines how you change your W values? Like how much would you change the values of W or your, the values of your weight Ws by? What actually determines that? That is actually determined by the learning rate. So let's talk about that. So learning rate, also sometimes called the step size, is what actually determines how much you change your W values by. So when you're approaching, so when you finally have your negative gradient and you see that your loss is decreasing, how do you actually, how much do you actually change your W values by? So that's actually determined by the learning rate. So for example, if your gradient is 2.5 and your learning rate is 0.01, then the gradient descent algorithm actually multiplies these two values together and you would get 0.025. So what happens is it adds that to your weight values. So it adds 0.025 to your weight values and then it puts these new weight values into your algorithm in order to find the new loss and you would actually approach a lesser loss. So the learning rate is actually set by you. If your learning rate is too high, what could potentially happen is that you actually miss the minimum point. You might actually skip, skip the minimum point altogether and you wouldn't want that. That's why it's very important that you don't set your learning rate uh, at a really high value. On the other hand, if your learning rate is a really small value, it would take you a very long time in order to reach the minimum point on the loss function. So it would take you a really long time in order to find these optimum weight values, optimum W values. So how do you find the most optimum rate, optimum value for the learning rate? Well, there is something called the Goldilocks principle. If your gradient is actually very small, which means that your line is actually pretty flat, it's almost horizontal. If your gradient is a very small value, then you would actually use a much higher learning rate. However, if your gradient is really high and it's really steep, then it's better to use a smaller learning rate. So guys, the learning rate determines how quickly or how slowly you approach your minimum loss point with your gradient descent. And also this loss function determines your most, helps to determine your most optimal weight values or for your linear regression algorithm. All of this is just to help you determine the most optimum or the best algorithm for your data. I hope this video was helpful in letting you guys understand these really basic concepts of what gradient descent is, what a learning rate is, and also what is multivariate linear regression. We're definitely going to be using a lot more of this in the future. If you guys didn't fully grasp this concept, it's totally fine because we'll definitely be talking more about this in the future as well. Be sure to check out the homework links in the description box below because they're going to be very helpful in addition to watching these videos. Thank you guys for watching and see you in my next video.